Hey, I need my phone back. Okay, just a sec. Let me finish this level. Leo, come on! Why do you need it so bad? I have a really important decision to make, and I want to do some research. Really important, huh? Maybe I could help. You definitely can't. <sighs> Fine. It's got to be pretty bad for you to want to do research. Hey, maybe we can ask an expert. An expert in what? In making tough decisions. We can use the app. All right, let's give it a try. Decision making. Here we go. We. Now this is an office. Goodness, so much stuff. Look at those animal heads. Whoever works here has definitely had an interesting life. I think we're in Teddy Roosevelt's office. I know he was a president, and I think teddy bears are named after him. You're right. I recognize him from movies at Mount Rushmore. Where is he? And I wonder why we got sent here for decision making. <clears throat> You've figured out whose office you're in. I am indeed Theodore Roosevelt. Now help me understand who you are and why you're here rummaging around through my things. Oh, hi, sir. I'm Layla. And I'm her brother, Leo. An app on my phone brought us all the way from 21st century America to talk to you about decision making. Ah, splendid! I love it! It's so good to hear that Americans, even a hundred years into the future, remain pushing the boundaries of industry and inventing wonderful technologies. We have so much cool stuff in our time, you wouldn't believe it! Oh, but I would, young man, and I do believe it. It's no surprise to me that in your time, America is full of invention and innovation. I've spent much of my time trying to get this country prepared for the modern industrial world. Judging by what you're saying, my efforts are not in vain. Ah, America. A great place for great people. Mr. Roosevelt, I just so happen to be really interested in interior design, and you have such an interesting office. Can we get a tour? Ask a politician to talk about himself, young lady. Forget decorating. You have a future on Capitol Hill. Let's start chronologically. That means an order by time. I know that. Don't be bratty just because the president thinks I'm smart. These boxing gloves are from my time at Harvard University. Believe it or not, when I was a boy, I was small and sickly and had to be homeschooled. But my father strengthened and toughened me up by building me a gym, and I took boxing lessons. Were you the champ? No, but I did win second place in the university boxing competition. I could never devote as much time and energy to sports as I just loved studying far too much. Let me guess, you were really into biology. Biology, botany, all kinds of science, really. But especially those dealing with nature. But I also love learning about the past and even had a few history books published. What are all these pictures over here? This wall is dedicated to the different jobs I had before becoming president. You were a cowboy? Yes, a gentleman rancher in the Badlands of Dakota. And a cop? Police commissioner of my hometown, New York City. What's going on in this picture? You look kind of like a cowboy mixed with a cop. Ah, yes. That photo is of me with my beloved Rough Riders. We were a group of volunteer soldiers during the Spanish-American War. I led us into battle, and our efforts helped liberate Cuba from Spanish rule. Ah, the memories! And this wall over here, it's for when you were president? You are correct. I became vice president in 1901. But just six months into that job, I was thrust into the presidency following the assassination of William McKinley. I was just 42 years of age, the youngest ever American to assume control of the country's highest office. Were you nervous? Uh, not really. I was faced with many tough decisions, but I stayed focused on my goal making America a place where everyone has a fair shot. I call it a square deal. Like fair and square. Exactly. So during my presidency, I made sure businesses and the government didn't lie, steal, or cheat. And I always promoted workers receiving fair pay and enough time off for proper rest. You sound like a nice president, sir. And that last wall, what's going on over there? Ah, uh, those are my passion projects. The big picture is of the Panama Canal, which I've had a large hand in making possible. It's not done yet, but once completed, my beautiful canal will allow goods to be shipped fast and cheap between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts, making our country even greater. The smaller photos are from my conservation work. 
That's like nature and national parks, right? You're spot on. The land within the United States is truly some of the finest and most spectacular in the whole world. I want our special places to remain clean and safe and able to be enjoyed by any American who chooses. Those pictures there are from places protected under my time as president. So many accomplishments, Mr. Roosevelt. But some failures too, young lady. Failures? You? Oh, yes. In fact, I just lost the presidential primary and will not be able to represent my political party, the Republicans, in the upcoming presidential election of 1912. I can't believe you lost. Uh, I'm having a hard time believing it too. But the rules are the rules, and while I remain very popular with the American people, I'm not quite as liked inside my own party. And in order to be nominated and run for president, your political party must choose you during their convention. <sighs> Alas, my fellow Republicans didn't pick me. Some people thought I wanted the government to be too big. Wow, so it really cost you to do something that was unpopular with your friends. It's not worth it if it made you lose. Hold on now. No matter what the cost, I'm never afraid to go against the grain or act boldly. Sometimes it turns out I've made a bad choice, but I always make my own decisions and accept whatever consequences or lessons the results may bring. There's much to learn from mistakes as well as successes. So you really think it's worth it to take chances and not make decisions just based on everybody's doing it or what others think? Precisely. But what if you lose or fail on something really big? Hmm. Take, for example, my time as a cowboy. Most people thought it was crazy for a New York City slicker like me to move west, and I ended up a complete failure as a rancher. But I don't regret my choice to try raising cattle on the Wild West at all. I needed the adventure. The risk I took was worth it, and that picture up there, despite representing something that wasn't a success, is one of my favorites. No regrets. Do you have any regrets? Oh, sure. In fact, a huge one. I could have run for president in 1908, and surely would have won. But I didn't, and it is a massive regret of mine. At the time, I had already served seven years as president and began worrying about what other people were thinking. There was still so much more that I wanted to accomplish as president. But another term would have meant that my presidency would last for a total of 11 years. There were rumblings from opponents and critics that I was too powerful. And so despite my better judgment, I listened to them. You worried about what other people thought and it came back to bite you. That is certainly one way to put it. So when making decisions, don't be afraid to go against the crowd, especially if what the crowd is doing isn't right. And don't worry about the outcome. And don't be afraid to be bold. Go big or go home, baby. You kids have got it. Say, Layla, what's your big decision anyway? I'm trying to decide whether or not to grow out my bangs. <sighs> Come again? Hey, don't judge me. I didn't say I had a Teddy Roosevelt-sized decision, but it's big for me. All my friends are growing out their bangs. For some reason, it's become this really big deal. And if I don't follow the crowd, I know I'm going to get made fun of. Ah, peer pressure, no small matter. But I don't think it's right to make a decision because of what others want, especially for something that's important. Your hair's important? Yes, Leo, my hair. It's a big commitment to grow out your bangs, and I don't want to have weird hair for two months. Plus, I like my hair how it is. Son, your sister has learned a wise lesson in decision making, and now you need to learn that a lady's hair is always important, and it always looks nice. But what if it doesn't? Trust me, kid, their hair always looks nice. Thanks, Mr. Roosevelt. And thanks for the tour and the advice on making decisions. Good luck on whatever adventure you decide to have next. So long, kids. Continue being fine young Americans. If you are interested in time traveling again, please subscribe to PragerU.com slash kids and watch more of our adventures. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.